So growing up in Samoa, I've uh, left Samoa now seven, so some vague memories, but uh, what I can remember is that mum was disabled. From what I heard was there was an accident where she was really young, had a fishing spear that went through one of her knees uh, and then contracted polio as a consequence of that. Now, I remember her being really active. Nothing stopped her then in her younger days and she was always active about what to do with family, with us and traveling between different villages. I mean, mum was always on the go. What I remember mostly of my mum is crawling around the house. Um, I remember her knees being like the soles of my feet. Um, they were really rough. Mum went all these years in Hamilton, I think, I how many years, eight or nine years or something like that, without a wheelchair. Uh, before she was actually eligible uh, to get a wheelchair. I remember mum calling to us, our room, waking us up, um, getting us ready for school, taking us to the bathroom. Um, all of those things that a normal mum would do for their kids, our mum was doing for us, but still the same. I remember growing up with mum and hearing the stories, you know, hearing people talk uh, about um, mum's disability. And it, it always came back to that um, it was a punishment by God because she might have done something wrong in the past or, you know, younger, and that's God's punishment for her. And so the attitude was they never saw mum as a whole person. Um, and they never really got her involved in a lot of stuff as a consequence. And the more I kept hearing that as a young, you know, kind of 16 year old, 13, you know, you kind of no filter. And people say that stuff about your mum, yeah. I got angry and I would lash out. But mum was always there to kind of manage the whole thing. And she'd always say, why do you, why do you let those people get to you? <laughs> you know, you just smile and forgive. Smile and forgive, you know. I never saw her different um, than any other mother, only because she showed us the mother's love. Uh, she never complained, never talked, uh, about her disability or anything. So growing up as a, as a kid, you like going, this is normal? Uh, until you're old enough to realize, oh man, every other mother's walking around, you know, and everything. Then you realize, oh man, this is how much mum do love their sons and do love their kids, mm. is that they don't share of the pain that they go through, the difference of having legs or not having legs. All they share is, I love my children. Mm. I love you, son. You're going to do well at school. You're going to do well for the Lord. You're going to do well. You're mm. going to do what they just speak life, life, life. Uh, it's awesome to remember those thoughts uh, and what we do now to carry on for our children. You know, the legacy lives on. And mm. I know that with all my heart that everything you know, that our mum did uh, and showed us of that mother's love, man, these are tears of joy. They're not tears of sorrow no more. Yeah. These are tears of, man, awesome memories. And I'm grateful to our mother. One of the things that mum instilled in us was to be confident in being able to uh, speak, uh, perform. So we had competitions at home, you know? Dad is the leader of one, mum's the leader of others. We got the kids and we all formed teams. We had the, the Bible verses, we had the script that we had to put into play, we had the song, and we would have a full blown, like, theater performance at home. With mum, she's always been born a leader. Like, her disability and everything didn't stop her from having this leader, the way she speaks, the way she pronounces, the pronunciation, everything to vowels, everything we teach our students, how to sing, how to move, how to stand up tall, how to, all of these things is the same stuff we got taught growing up. The history of Saints of Performing Arts started um, nine years ago, but two years before that, um, it was a dance academy called Saints Dance Academy, uh, run by my wife, and she started um, rounding up a group of her nieces and they wanted to start a dance crew. Uh, two years later, I had a little idea because my wife said, oh, you know, I'd love for you to come in and teach our girls a choir song. We're doing this little fundraiser thing. Um, but when she said that to me, a light bulb kind of went off in my head and said, maybe we should think about turning the Dance Academy into a performing arts school. We understood there was a need for it in our communities. I started only with one vocal class, one little choir group, um, one dance class. I love 
that we started like that. I love that we started all heart because we went four years of no funding. We went four years where me and my wife just did it out of our pocket, just did the little fundraiser things. We wanted to be um, an effective community program that would have a great chance at making some generational changes. I believe 100% it wouldn't be successful today if one, we didn't get our intentions right and we weren't doing it with the right heart. Two, those values that our mom taught us, love, kindness, respect, being patient, um, and equality, really just looking at everyone as equals. It's a wonderful woman like my mum, um, who grew up with a disability and never let it slow her down, never did the pity thing, feel sorry for me. It's that that's surviving today. It's that that I see in all the kids that we teach. It's that what I see in the kids when they're on stage performing, when I look at parents, the pride that they feel in their kids, same pride I feel in my kids. Our kids are raised in the school as well. All of this is connected. Everything that everyone can see today with Super came from a disabled mother, our mother. I believe that 100%. Let your love show. It's time to